So that is civilian legal to own as long as you got the cash. Um, a lot of cash. A lot of a lot of cash. That's a good. That's a good find. That's a big uniform right there. Is that a street sweeper? I've never seen a street sweeper. The uh, SD? Come on, man. Do you have any like super secret cool stuff that's back here? Boy. How do you feel about? Earlier this year, we set out on a quest around Salt Lake City to find the Gucciest guns currently sitting in shops. You know, ultimately, we found a $200,000 rifle. And so this one is serial number six, and we don't know how many total were made. Six. Yeah. Six. And uh, so, you know, some of the estimates that we've heard is that it's worth up to $200,000, but... Well, it's the rarity, you know? And we found the rifles used in Utah's firing squads. So we got all five of the Winchester 64s that were used in the execution of, I can't even tell you how many prisoners, so somebody got word of it. Whoa. Today, we're in Las Vegas and we're back on the hunt to find the Gucciest guns in the city of Sin. Okay, first stop, we are just off the strip. What's the first? Ventura place? Munitions. Mike over there was gracious enough to let us stop by, see the shop. And uh, let's check it out, man. See if we can find some good stuff. Uh, wait, look, if you guys subscribe to Patreon, this is the kind of stuff we get. Um, so, you know, we'll sell you real estate, but hey, real estate's cool. But again, if you sign up $3.80 minimum, we will get a rig like that to bring you guys even better content. So we'll link the Patreon below. And uh, let's just jump in there, guys. You don't really see this kind of thing in Utah. We're too clean. We're clean in Utah. So these guys officially run a busy, busy shop. Holy shit! Uncheck three twenty. Yes, I can. No, what is uh? X five two two six. What's working? I was asking to be shy. It looks really good. Or it should work, but I don't know how well it shoots. The trigger's fantastic, though. I'm gonna try it. Why should tell? Yeah, resets a little, a little mushy, but the break itself is money. So yeah, because this case, I was like, okay, this case got some cool stuff going on. Little Rattlers, it's the 308, Spear 308, I thought. Multi caliber, that doesn't help. And is that the the 308? That is the 308. Nice. Uh, SBR 13 bottom. Nice. Whoa, sulfur's built. That's clean. That's cool. That with a can would be a lot. Of this is just one of these guns that I have a total interest in for no reason at all. Does that, which direction does that go? So it pulled down that lever on the flat. That boy right here. Yeah. Uh, You're gonna pull down on it. It's pretty stiff. And that floats down. Mm. And that is my wow. There we go. So I have a weird obsession with getting one of these. Uh -huh. There's a movie reference. I don't know if you're gonna get it. Remember Broken Arrow? Yeah. Okay. So John Travolta has a Ruger, sorry, an AC 556K. It's like a little short barrel version of this with the underfolder. And it's so badass in the movie. It's when, remember when they go down to the cave? Yeah, yeah. It's his gun that he has in the cave. Some of you like 90s, 2000s kids are gonna know the reference. When we ask people the question, what's your bucket list gun you could have, you could have anything. So mine's a Beretta 93R. It's the gun that he has on the train at the end. That like massive pistol that's a machine gun. You can, and there's none in the U.S. I asked. There's none in the U.S. So it's just like a non-possibility. But Broken Arrow has probably like two of my all-time favorite bucket list guns. We just look at it all. I mean, there's an M1A SOCOM up there, which I've wanted forever. So it's always cool to see those on the shelf. And then in the corner, we got some stuff we're going to look at. So you can throw an optic on it. It's kind of like a throwback battle rifle. Black Hawk Down uh, It's one of those during the last fight. So they're just kind of iconic, cool guns. What? Who makes this? So, so it's a Galil Quill, I'm assuming? It's uh, built off of their parts kits. Yeah, American Tactical makes it. Yeah, so they got the old school parts kits and made this bad boy here for you. No shit. With the old school charger with the vertical yeah. charger. Yeah. I was like, what is going on here? You throw some wood furniture on that. I'd rock that shit out. What in the what? The old school Galil parts build? That's the kind of thing this guy impulse buys right there. I'm a fan of that. So this corner we got uh, some HK stuff. So MP5Ks, standard MP5s. We got a bunch of BMT APCs, some GHMs. Um, and then we got a whole wall AK stuff, which I'm sure Jake will be all all about. So little Sam 7K and 762. Max so tiny you can barely get it in. Like you take that, you put a little put a little work into that, that thing would be very, very full. This was that previous gen 
This is when HK, I guess they were doing the best they could. This was pre-actual like MP5K, SP5K, when they had to do the button. There's no paddle, right? Yeah. When they had to do the button and all that stuff and no tri and everything. This was like in HK's moment of, thanks for giving us this, but this is not what we wanted. You're probably doing the best you can, but this is not actually what we want. But I'll get it because it's the best I can do. Whoa, that's, that's cool. The finish on that, that's very neat. Because it's a 22. Yeah. yeah. And then behind you in the case, we got uh, Liberace's AK. So we got a gold-plated AK in a display case there, which is always kind of cool to see. Right behind you on the wall, Jake. Oh, dang. There you go. Let's see what they got on the pistol side of the case. Got some mechanics, some blocks. We got some staccatos. Always good to see. Okay. This Archon case, Type B. You know what? I don't think it's an Archon Type B. I think that's the salient um, Arsenal is. Strike 1. Oh, I want to see that. I do want to see that. That salient arsenal there. That's what it's Oh yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean see what those are all. Not the same prices, that's a good price on this. I'm surprised that's actually still in here. Yeah. That that's a little like we have people very hard to uh, jumping all over. Yeah. Rush. No, and it's it's yeah. uh, it's one of those like people look yeah. like look past it, don't know what it is. Yeah. yeah like yeah. so like the fact that you were like, oh that one like for your it's your guys' uh, style, yeah. but you have to know what you're looking for. What do you mean you guys? You people. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, it's pretty nuts. And so, like the, the, the angle, your stain will take up and everything. But once you hit that wall, I mean, it, it's like, damn. And the reset is nothing. You feel a trigger on that. That is a spectacular trigger. The best way to describe it, the Langdon P30 that I have with zero take up, the definitive wall and then a break. Yeah. There's no take the up, break wall, is really break. Nice. It's a really nice break. That is a very cool pistol. What's any uh, cool 1911s, 2011s, Sandler? Got the competition. And uh, XC, I yeah, got the, like that, li the limited Staccato P. Pretty dope, this one's gonna be uh, a 6.5. They also make it in the 308 version. Yeah, man, pretty sweet trigger too. Radiant wrap, the charging handle, and protection safety sector, also from Radiant. I mean, they're killing the game. Their new Sabre line for the AR-15 is also for man, dude. Hydraulic buffer system, hyperfire trigger. That's a very nice trigger on that. Can I see that gold Beretta? I mean, yeah, it's yeah, it's super soft. so it's the, uh, in a titanium nitride finish, so it gives it that gold accent. Oh, so and it's going to be a little bit more durable than 24 karat gold blade just because well, gold yeah. is softer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but you can't beat it for the price as well, man. Like, if you want a discreet carry gun, I don't really think you can can't really beat that, you know? All right, Jake, I want to talk to you about something. Please do. What do you want to talk about? I would like to talk about belts. Belts? What kind of belts? I got them Segura ones. Oh, wow. These kind of belts. Yeah, I took that off one-handed. You see how quick that was? Yeah. These belts. This is the light inner belt from Segura. I wear it as an EDC belt. I think you do, too. I've got it on right now. Do you also wear it on the range? Most of the time, no. Yeah, I do. This belt also stacks with my battle wagon, which is what I use when we're doing outside the waistband training, when we're filming for the show. Our code, 1911, saves you about 10% off each belt. 11 Syndicate. Oh, our code 1911 Syndicate saves about 10% off the belt. And what else, Jake? Um, you know, don't get into battles, but if you do it, battle wagon's a good route. Anyway, yeah, we'll get on, get on with the freaking video here. There you go. Thanks to Scara. Now that's a flamethrower. Wait, but just so everyone knows too, we're not gonna say prices of anything that we see. You know, we'll be as clean as we can for for YouTube here. Is there any aside from what's on the floor? No. Oh. Do you have any like super secret cool stuff that's back here? Well, how do you feel about swastikas? Uh, so we should more two done. We should yeah. we should look at those. Yeah, this is the hunt for Gucci guns. This is okay, about cool. finding unique crazy so guns. The other business partners buying like all of the Axis guns from. So I bought the dope one. I Honestly, I, I bought the fucking. I was like, hmm. Is it this in that is, little room? No. Keep in mind, everyone, this is this is no endorsement of history whatsoever. But we as a community, you have to say, hey, look, history has happened. And and there's tools that you don't have to agree with it, but you just have to say, hey, look, this is a piece of history, right? And so yeah. we're gonna show you. So my favorite one, honestly, is this guy. Because it came with this guy. So we'll tell us what we have. If you read, it's a, it's a capture letter. So like, oh, wow. back when they could like, you, you wrote what you were taking back with you. Yeah. And it's a fucking samurai sword. And that Nambu. It's from the Japanese pistol. So um, this certificate was dated 1940, January 4th, 1946. Um, basically issued to 
Americo Pellegrino, which is kind of awesome. Um, he was a sergeant. Um, I don't know, I guess that's the equivalent of like his unit number, serial number, I guess, whatever you would consider it. And then armed service number. He gets to retain his possession of the following one Japanese pistol, which is that, and one samurai sword. <laughs> so, Americo Pellegrino got to keep his service pistol and his samurai sword. So what do we know about this? I'm like I'm not a, I'm not a, like I mean, a World War II. Yeah. Um, Just that. Oh, so the name of oh, oh, one of the most dangerous pistols uh, ever made. Uh, we sell the ammo. We actually, sell like a decent amount. It's eight millimeter Nambu. Wow. Yeah. So that one, that, you know, that's the. Jeez. There's a little, little to be said about that one. Oh, smokes. Man, this is wild. Also, with Jake's Panerai and that gun in the same shot, that is an interesting. Oh yeah, a little, yeah, there. A little mix, huh? Yep. Well, I mean, Panerai was for access to combat. There's markings on right. the gun. Is there any markings it's on the gun? Still watch. What's crazy is that thing actually really feels like good Dude, in the we hand. Have, we have we have them downstairs. I literally have like a couple. Oh, of them. really? Yeah, in the case. Oh, so because somebody oh, somebody uh, Century Arms or something imported a bunch of them. Oh, okay. like I literally have those downstairs. Huh? Oh, holy. Yeah. It was the uh, Beretta model 1934. It was the original service pistol of the Royal Italian Army beginning in 1934. So there you go. So going all the way back to 1935 to 1991. Yeah. 19 yep. until 91. Yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> that is a very inconvenient pistol to have as your service pistol through the 90s. Yeah, it sounds like very nice. Uh, very, very nice. <laughs> Stick to making the pizza and leave the <laughs> leave the shooting to us Americans here, guys. I mean, that's kind of cool. Well, he didn't oh, he didn't keep them. It? He took them <laughs> off of someone. And brought them oh, home yeah, yeah, after yeah. the war. The American so, got to bring it yes, back. Yes, the American yeah, yeah, yeah. got to bring it back. I mean, still, that's just really cool. Very cool. You know, it's just cool. Again, like, just pieces of history. Eh, it's kind of neat. You know, all the yeah. mark clues and stuff. Cool. That's just you can cool. see the wear mark for the takedown lever, if that's what that is. Oh, oh shit. shit. What do we have going on here? They were in the middle of transferring this, and the guy died. What the what? Dang. Oh. That's what's so well, number 1700. Serial 1700. Wow. Look at it. It just says straight up full auto. Full auto. Really? <laughs> or single. So you go what? Uh, single and then full. full. Again, some of the interesting stuff you see in gun shops, right? Boy, these sights are so rudimentary. Yeah, I mean, that's like a trench clearing gun. You're not looking down sights. You're holding it at your hip with a stick mag or drum mag and going to work. How cool is that? So, oh, what do we have going on here? Street sweeper? Is that a street sweeper? I've never seen a street sweeper. I mean, this is like super like thug shit from like the 90s. Yeah, this is some uh, bootlegger shit right here. Oh, dang. It was like, why is it the destructive device? And honestly, there's no good answer. There's literally no sight. Have you shot this? No. <laughs> You should. Y'all don't sweep no streets. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> sweep the streets. <laughs> I love how the stock, like, literally, there's just no retention of it whatsoever. Well, look, I mean, look at it. Look at all the, like, the welds on, like. It's so bad. It's a very interesting piece. Dude, look at this. There's no That's sights. Cool. There's no actual sights. Well, I mean, bro, they're holding it like I'm this. sorry, does a broom so... have sights? Yeah. Like, when you're sweeping streets, bro, <laughs> yeah. you, got, you, have a, you have a red dot on it when you're like, you would have to weld the dot on, right? And hope to God it survives. All right, let's get over. We're gonna check out store number two. On to the next shop, Jake. But before we get there, you want to tell the people anything? Yeah, um, we could use your support. You, in America, we could use your support. The 1911 Syndicate is a real estate company. We work with a lot of gun guys, vets, cops, firefighters occasionally. Um, but yeah, go to 1911syndicate.com. Um, like I said, we work nationwide. We'll get you in touch with an agent that we know, help you guys out. It's also Patreon, which truthfully in this shitty real estate market makes a big difference to the channel. Um, you can give us a couple bucks a month to get some behind the scenes stuff. Stop number two, what do we got? Stop number two, we are at Freedom Firearms, another shop here in Vegas. Uh, I know the guys here or have met them in the past at SHOT Show. They've always said they got a great shop told them what we're doing. They said, come on in. We got a bunch of good stuff for you. So let's go see what they got. We're hoping to find. He's kind of just poking around, seeing um, what jumps out at you. Well, the idea is that we're are bouncing around Vegas and finding all the coolest guns we can find in gun shops right now. You know what? Same with we might have one or two. You know, I wish we wouldn't have sold the suppressed fix, which was always super cool and looked like an alien gun. Yeah. Um, obviously, staccato case. 
A um, couple of the finer things in life that you boys might be he used knows, to. He knows you, Jake. Oh, nice. Very nice. We do have them all by manufacturer as well. We got the Shadow 2 Compact in. Have you guys put that in your hands at all? No, I want to yeah. see You guys are going to freak out. I've curious about those. Nice Nighthawk single step. Very nice Nighthawk. I changed the grips out, but that's just me. I mean, uh, CZ Shadow 2 Compact. Haven't seen one in person yet, so this would be the first time. I've heard a lot of good things. Comes optic cut, obviously, which is nice. Run it cocked and locked, like 1911. These are pretty cool. Uh, people talk about, people wanted us to do a video on that as a like a reference point to 2011s um and we just haven't yeah uh i don't i don't know that cz's excited for that video for us boy that feels nice it the old feels hand, very it? nice oh very nice you shot one of these oh no? my god the minute we get enough for us to buy yeah i'm all over it yeah the wife already knows just get ready to yell <laughs> it's right gonna on. happen Give it it's kind of been in my intrigue list yeah it's like it's not a 1911 or 2011, but it kind of wants to be. Like it doesn't quite know what it is trying to be. It's like, is it trying to be a staccato? Like what, you know? How so good it, does that feel? Action's really good. So I was just talking to Mike and I'm like, it's an interesting gun because I'm not quite sure what it wants to, but like, like what, what is it trying to fill? Agree, agree, 100%. There's no spot in that lineup that, that fits anything, especially now that they've kind of been semi-absorbed by CZ. Yeah. The biggest, problem that we see most people having with that gun because it feels phenomenal in hand it still takes cz 75 grips yeah front sight's great optics capabilities and light rails especially for a carry gun yeah, nowadays are almost mandatory and especially yeah. at a 2k price point if you don't give people those it's very hard for us to get behind pushing that because dan weston does a great job making fine pistols yeah all that does not matter to the consumer if they don't get the moonroof, the leather seats, the speaker system, the rims. You know, it's that's true, what they for want. For me, an ambi safety, you know. You're exactly, right. especially for lefties, hundred percent. And then I go, okay. So what do we got in uh, 1911 world? You know, we we're going back to Dan Wesson. We have the Guardian. If you're an old school kind of guy, but again, for you, it's going to be am. a little difficult. Traditional grip safety, no, uh, no left side frame safety for you to drop. The Valor, staying with the theme. Oh, you got one. We got a bunch. We bought them just for you. You got to buy them all. Oh, this is your carry gun, right, Chris? You got the <laughs> Mark Twenty Three. <laughs> if we go by, uh, you know, yeah. by proportion, oh, you got the shortest oh, guy God, grabbing the sorry. tallest SBS. I think it's cool as hell, man. I think it's just yeah. it's the kind of shotgun I'd be drawn to right here. Guns always shoot more tactical when they're green. So Van Comp, um, how do we describe Van Comp? So like, Van Comp is. Two shotguns, what Terran Tactical and Agency is to other manufacturers. They kind of soup up shotguns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They backboard the barrel, they lengthen the forcing cone, yeah. they do a 64 hole porting at the end. They take, you know, huge groups and turn them into tight groups with better patterns, less recoil. It's super, super smooth. If you didn't know, Mike also owns yeah, yeah, Bank yeah. Comp. Yeah, I followed the Bank Comp page for. A little bit on IG, and again, I'm not a shotgun guy, and um, and I'm like, man, they got cool shotguns. I was like, they got some really cool shotguns. They do because they're kind of old school, but again, kind of newer it, feature. Yeah, it's like yes, it's like yes. modern retro kind of thing going on. Where I'm like, yeah. So by default, they may have just won Gucci's gun store in Vegas because they just brought this out for us. They don't know that this is my favorite flavor. It's cold. It's gonna be crisp. It's gonna be refreshing. Freedom. 700 milligrams caffeine in one sip. Oh wow. It's um, like a yellow pound cake. We did previously try to get a Bang Energy sponsorship unsuccessfully, but who knows? Maybe they'll call us now. Uh, what would you like to look at, sir? Um, those Springfield M1As. I, I'd be interested in them. Yeah. Are you familiar with the M1A? I am. So I will tell you this, sir. What's your name? Chris. Chris. Jake. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, sir. You wouldn't say that I'm going to hell, would you? Uh, just from looking at you, you do look like you're going straight there. Okay, well, so. that's neither here nor there. Um, I had one of these in the day, and I would rank this as one of the few guns that I regret selling. You actually had one of these? And, and I had an optic on it and everything. It, it was all kitted out. I didn't know that. And I sold it, and it makes me angry to this date that I still don't have this. Sometimes we all, sometimes we make mistakes, and we regret them. I'm just pissed. It's so mechanical. There's nothing it does great other than be really cool. Really cool. I thought I saw a B&T... <laughs> SPC with like a can on it. I swear I saw something. Obviously with the SDE can. With the can. Yep. Yeah. So look, man, you throw an optic and light on that, 
That's a party. Offset pack. They look pretty cool. It's a party. Was it a mix? Is the trigger great? No. Trigger is not excellent. But, you know. Oh, yeah, there it is. I know what I'm looking at. So, grab top shelf third over from the right. There's a can on it. I think it's an SPC SD is what I think it is. Yep, SPC 9 SD. So that's a find right there. Yep. I rank that as one of the better finds of the day. Yep. The SD? Come on, man. Like, granted, it's going to be, I guess, a two stamp. Yeah, I guess just a one stamp since with, there's nothing. It's a pistol configuration, so it would just be one stamp for your suppressor. This sounds really good. That's a good find. So it's a 16 inch GHM? Yep, 16 inch GHM. GHMs were originally made so you could have like a pistol configuration or SBR configuration, swap out the upper and then go do competition. So this is something you'd run in like PCC matches. Yeah. Right? So. I mean, it's funky. Kind of different. Yeah, right? it's definitely funky. That's an acquired taste or purpose built like it's for Comp. cops. Yeah. You know? Sir, could I look at the um, that MR762? I believe this is the LRP package or long range package. Christopher, he got a lift the. No, he's stuck on the uh, bipod. Right. So, yeah, this is the HK762A1 or the LRP pack. Yeah. So, it comes with your optic, everything you see here, the nice tano color, right? I like. Good HK. That's a case of daddy like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> daddy like that. Um, I'd rock the shit out of that. Yeah. What do we got in the spear lineup over there? Looks like we've got a plethora. Of, uh, plethora. Plethora? 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 I think plethora. It's, I think it's really dependent on what region of the U.S. you're from, how you say that. I vote Plethora. Plethora? Anyone with me on Plethora? <laughs> Pretty good behind the counter, man. Uh, I might have to put you on payroll. Dude, I mean, are you Seems like you've done this before. Oh. Let me see right now. Oh, here we go. Uh, transferable MP5 SD. Okay. Uh, and SR25. So, tell me what we got here again. So that is a transferable MP5 SD that was just rebuilt. So that is civilian legal to own as long as you got the cash. So um, a lot of cash. A lot of a lot of cash. And then of course we have your uh, SR25. That ass. Yeah. Very I got to admit that. I, I mean, hey, look. I mean, that's very top on my list right there. Hey. So transferables are pre the machine gun ban, right? A little bit before yeah. my time. 80 something, I think. 86. Uh, very close to yeah that. yeah i'm um, sorry guys we should probably know that but basically it's after the full auto ban these were made before that so you can own them as a civilian without going through all the ffl sot paperwork it's just a lot of money um typically tens of thousands of dollars oh yeah no guaranteed i, I mean a pre-ban mp5 sd i mean like i'm gonna take a guess here to say between 40 to 50. Yes, yeah. The one that I saw when I first got into the gun industry like 10 years ago that a customer bought was 38. Yeah. So, and they, they ain't going down and down. No. Yeah. No. As time goes, they become even more more and more rare because, again, they can't make them anymore. Um, it's either transferable or it's up. It's very cool, man. You don't see a lot of those. No, no. That, that's a unicorn right there. Yep. That's a big unicorn right there. Bam. Cool. Wraps it up for Freedom Firearms. Good shop. Great shop. Great Next people. Shop. They're counter guys. Like, as soon as you walk in the door, they have a rule. They're good. Five steps in, five seconds, you better say hello. Good on them. So, yeah. Good shop. What's the uh, third and final stop? Third one we're heading to is Northwest Arms. Okay. So, all right. We'll see you over there. Do some giveaways. You get early access to uh, product releases, all kinds of stuff like that. It's fun. It's a good time. Get in there. All right. On to the next shop. We're here. Stop number three, Northwest Arms. I know nothing about this shop cool. whatsoever. Maybe it's a sleeper. I don't know. There's one way to find out. Yeah, Instagram had some unique, interesting stuff. So that's why we're here. A lot of interesting galils up there that I, sh I would like to take a look at. With the old school. Oh my God. What is going on up there? I told you. They had some old. Well, I mean, those are straight like OG. I'm sure they're like, you know, resto mod kind of deal but i mean that's like og gorilla More bronze and silver ip5 how's it going man chris nice to meet you sir thanks for letting us stop by i've got jake your buddy i think a buddy called you thought you were gonna come over yeah, yep. and yeah. yeah so what is going on here it's a tortort build a what tortort receiver okay the original israeli parts kit 
original IMI barrel, fresh night sights, uh, new wood, and carry handle. Dang. Dang. Oh, you were speaking my language. You said this is like a resto mod kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah? Ish. I think it's very original. It's very original. It's pretty much all new without ruining a pre van. Yeah. Okay. So we dig that? I want that in like a shorty version. We had five pistols made also with the uh, ready to be SBR. All five sold already though. I, I do have one here to look at. Oh, yeah, bro. Yep. Yep, yep. Yeah, okay. Now we're talking. Yeah, now we're talking, and it ditches the carry handle, too. That's the kind of thing that this guy blows some cash on right there. <laughs> that is really cool. With the, the lines with the magnet. The lines with the magnet are going to be... And then you would throw this. Okay, take us through that ACR. What you got going So, this is a little nostalgic for me. My first AR pattern rifle ever that my dad bought me, Dwayne, who you know. Yes, I do. Bought me an ACR. So, okay. it's, it is the one gun that I feel incredibly bad that I sold. So when I saw this online, I was like, dude, I hope that's still here because they're just cool. Um, they didn't take off like we hoped. So can you walk us through this? Yeah, still uh, still a work in progress. Late Bushmaster receiver, because it's from Alabama, mm -hmm. right before they went out. RPM, okay. handguard, Templar. Their aluminum lower okay. takes an AR grip. So you see, I'm still waiting for them to send me a trigger guard. Sure. Still waiting for safety. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. That's but why, I mean, this is cool, yeah. The, the best part is, is it's not the QD model. So this has the lightweight trunnion. Okay. With the heavy parkerized Remington Defense 10.5 barrel. Which is what barrel that is supposed to have, yes. so. Yeah. Dude. You shot it yet? Yes. Yeah? Not yeah. much, because I still don't have yeah, yeah, yeah. everything. But I made sure it worked. Pretty smooth. That's about it. Yep. Thank very, you. very smooth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very cool. The, uh, the original ones had a quick swap yeah. barrel. Yeah. So you could take out the barrel and swap it within, what is it, 30 seconds? Yeah. Like drop the pin, swap the barrel, ratchets down, you're good to go. But it's right. yeah, very much similar to a saw, just upside down. Yeah. So uh, uh, makes me a little uh, emotional. That thing's freaking cool, man. I mean, I'm trying not to. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dad. No. <laughs> what I said. Um, all right, what other cool stuff? Oh man, you got an FDE APC. That's a good. That's a good find. I mean, you find APCs fairly easily, but the FDE, not so much. I don't know about the block back part, but that's a that's a score. That's a big score there. I've never seen one of those outside of Switzerland. Well, and that was the um, we got hands on the covert model that it all folds up. Boy, that is cool. That's a excellent find right there. Oh, that's right. I forgot about the whole decocker like uh -huh. system yep. and everything. I forgot about that. Dude, that's great. That is very great wild. pickup there. I'm surprised that's still sitting on the well, shelf, to be honest with you. Just put it out of the uh, yeah, Okay, yeah. I mean, someone's going to be smart enough who's like, dude, I know what that is. I'm picking that thing up. Dang. Very cool. Very cool. So, we got, so, so you guys carry a bunch of BMT stuff. Let's see, what do we got in the pistol case here? Oh, an X and eight commercial? Yeah. Did uh, Tommy build this? Yep. Dude, that's yeah, cool. It's funny because in like uh, three or four weeks, we have a video on the actual XM8. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah, they let us like, we got to go to the gray room and um, yeah, I mean like, it's pr pretty badass. So, okay, so he does full on uh, XM8. So what's the base, uh, SL8? This one is an SL8, okay. yeah. Okay. Hey, that's cool. I mean, they always do some cool one-off or like small yeah. batch. Like I'm impressed builds. with the Galil selection. That's not very common with shops that do like no, projects. Like no, they have some kind of specialty stuff like that. The, the Galil thing for me is very impressive. Very oh, this is um, from PMT. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa. It's not a, is it an SPC? TP9. TP9. You've never seen this? I've never seen this. Oh, okay, cool. So obviously, yeah, I get it. Okay. <laughs> and then, so it's a bang gun. Oh, oh now that is it's a bang. well done uh, TP9 right there. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, three. Yeah, these little bags are awesome. Yeah, this don't hit any. You know, she hits it. Carl uh, Bruger was telling us about this when we were there. Yeah, I don't know. Perfect for the 20s with the bumper or the 25s. <laughs> That's so cool. That's cool. That's really cool. And there's a handle. Yep. And so, <laughs> what, how do you actually shoot through that? He just unzip and shoot. Okay, so you just stick your hand on the back end mm -hmm. of it. Boy, that sounds wrong. You just stick your hand on the back end of it. So, what do you got there? Uh, my Colt 607. Here's a part piece. That's about it. Is this um, 
I'm not super spun up on these. Like, is that a standard feature? Is this some like... It was on this. I believe it was the first adjustable stock used on an AR. Oh, really? That's mm -hmm. pretty interesting. I've never seen that before. Dang. Carry handle top and everything. Mm -hmm. Freaking yeah, cool. But he's cool. got an updated guy's charging handle. Yeah, he's got a go press, energetic armament, right? <laughs> yep. So, well, on. you still got to be able to use it at yeah. the end of the day. Dude, but obviously, cool. throwback grip. Got the 20 rounders in there. It's cool. It's cool. Okay, so wrapping up the day here, just sort of some of our favorite picks of the day. Um, anything standing out to you? Yeah, first stop, that gold plated AK, just because it's awesome, dude. Just for weird factor? Yep. Sure. And then, of course, they had the Station 6 there, which is always cool to good see. Good pick. Good right? pick on that. I yep. mean, score the mag, use the wipes. That gun is awesome. And the last time we wire. saw one was in Switzerland. So, kind of, yeah. kind of cool to see. Yeah. So. Um, and then, of course, his World War II stuff. Yeah. Right? I mean, historically significant, obviously. Um, Don't endorse that, but yeah, cool history. Look, I'm going to boil it down. If I'm going to say, at the end of the day, if I was walking away with something in my collection right now that's not a transferable machine gun, because mm -hmm. obviously, but um, if I eliminate that criteria, I'm going to tell you, I would walk away with one of the Galils from Northwest Arms. Absolutely. How cool are those Like, for, for me, those Galil, like, resto, I don't even know if you call it a resto mod, but, like, um, for me and my personal taste and what I'm into right now, that would be my pick of the day. Yeah, okay. I think uh, also Northwest Arms, just because of nostalgia, personal reasons, that uh, that ACR. ACR, yeah. The updated ACR. I mean, that is the one gun that if I could take it back, I would not sell that gun. Yeah, so. Very cool. Man, yeah. so, so I, I, I guess in many ways, look, th these are all great chops today. Well, um, also, sorry, last thing. Yeah. The LRP, dude. LRP would be cool. Yeah, you don't see them in shops. Yeah. They're hard to see. They had a 20S there also. The di I mean, the Shadow 2 Compact. Yeah, I, I would actually be intrigued to potentially pick up one of those at some point. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely say the sleeper shop, if, if I go, you know, um, uh, Ventura, uh, Freedom, they both go, hey, look, these are good sort of, I'm going to say mainstream shops, you know, like modern, new, clean, you know, you go, yes, this is a nice shop. Northwest Arms, sleeper. Yeah. Yeah. It's a sleeper shop. I expected some cool stuff, but not all that cool stuff. The XM8 conversion. Yeah. The Galils. Yeah. The now, some of those are personal things, but you know, you go, look, man, they got some sleeper stuff in there. Yeah. Cool shop. You know, nothing notable from the outside. You just go, okay, I don't know. Gun shop, go inside. Eh, you got some bangers on the shelf. Yeah. Yeah. So big shout out to all three shops, Northwest Arms, Freedom, and Ventura Munitions. Mike, Mike, and Patrick, really appreciate you guys. Thanks for letting us stop by. Now that said, if you guys are, um, let's say you're carrying a Station 6, yeah. for example, mm -hmm. right? That's your CCW gun and some shit pops off, right? Yeah. And you use the Station 6 to handle the threat in a legally justified manner. Yep. What would you need and want? I would want firearms legal protection. That's a good point. That's that good is point. concealed carry or self-defense insurance. Could be a Station 6, could be a ROC. As long as you're in the state that you're legally allowed to be in and legally defend yourself, you're covered. The greatest thing with them is our code 1911 syndicate save you about a third off each package. Oh wow, that's a, that's a lot of savings. A lot that you can then throw at a Galil. It's a very good point. See what I'm saying here? I'm trying to save you guys point. some money. Yeah. Okay. They have several different packages. They have like the married guy that travels, so I'm covered in all the states I go to as long as I'm legally allowed to carry there. They have the single guy that stays in his house as a hermit. Yeah. That's the package he has. Right. Also, the best thing when you call. Because in that scenario, you're going to want to talk to who? Uh, an attorney. An attorney. Why? Because uh, I got in some shit. Yeah. I don't want a customer service rep. I don't want some 1-800 number. I want an attorney. So check those guys out. Again, 1911 Syndicate. Save you about a third off. See you guys next week.